Hello there, and welcome to my new tutorial for managers and work orders in Dwarf Fortress. In this video, we're going to explore the entire mechanic of work orders as thorough as possible. I'm going to explain how a manager works, how to set up these things, how to understand them, and how to apply them to your fortress without breaking too much of a sweat there. So first of all, let's talk about what work orders are. Work orders enable you to automate your workshops. So right now we can't do anything because we don't have a manager so with a manager you can tell your people to produce something when certain conditions are met that's the gist of it so let's talk about first how to set up a manager what he does and then we're going to go into the entire work order mechanics so the manager you find him in the nobles menu he's sitting on there you just have to assign somebody who's good at organizing and then you're good to go two things are important about the job of your manager first of all Take care that your manager is somebody who's not too busy with other things because he will have to approve all the work orders before they get done. Basically, whenever you assign a work order, your manager has to get into his office, check it out what's happening there, say okay to that, and then it gets piped towards your workshops. So it ain't a good thing if it's uh, if your manager happens to be the military uh, dude here who's training all day and stuff like that. So basically, in an ideal environment, your manager is just busy managing things. All right. So allocating that guy was one step. The other thing, you need an office. The cool thing is for the office of your manager, just a chair in a room will do. So we just have to assign that then to your manager and then you're all set up. It's quite important that you know that your manager is most of the time more of a decorational job. They really literally only get there, say okay, and get out there. That's the entirety of their job. But it's a very important job because if they don't get in there and nod it off, nothing gets done in your workshops. So there's not that much more to lose about the managers. Let's get on into the work order things. So first of all, when a manager is employed, certain few things get enabled. First of all, we get to assign what kind of worker is allowed at a certain workshop. So you can always assign a certain specific worker to a workshop that can be really, really useful. For example, when we're talking about weaponsmiths and stuff like that. So assigning a really brilliant uh, blacksmith or, or, or armor or weaponsmith would be a great idea for a certain workshop. So that's one thing you can do. The other thing is you can assign global work orders and local work orders. We're going to go over the global ones first and then the other stuff. So there's down here an entire tab called work orders. So right now we don't have any active. So to activate a work order, you press on in there and then you select what you want to produce. At the beginning, it's uh, configured to all tasks. You can click through the uh, different items that every workshop has in store and select what you want to automate. In this scenario, let's automate ourselves the production of beds because that's one really, really important thing that everybody needs. So we get on over to the carpenter's workshop and now we see only the items that can be made in the carpenter's workshop. So if this uh, really stresses you out, you can also use the search function and then you get on it, uh, get it there, or you get over to the Carpenter's Workshop if you know exactly what kind of workshop you want. You can, of course, use the search function also inside of the workshop. Especially useful if you want at the Metalsmith's Forge all the items of iron, for example, because there is a lot. And if you don't filter these things, it can be quite the nuisance to browse through all that. Okay, enough of that. Let's go to the beds. So you click that, and then a work order appears. Lots of buttons here. So let's get on over first, uh, of, over all these things. So this is the job. This is the amount of times it shall be done. So right now we ordered to make 10 beds. We can now specify 
how many workshops should be used for that. So if we had, let's say, five carpenters, we could now say, please use only one of those carpenters workshops for that job. We could also specify that here via the plus and minus buttons. Basically, this number here is to limit the job to certain to certain amount of workshops to avoid overheating your industry. So this icon here tells you whether or not your um, manager has okayed that job. So if this is uh, okayed, it has a green check mark on it. And here we get to check on out how many times a job can be produced. Here so it has to no, be produced, will be, will be done. So uh, we can here select in a specific number or here again, click ourselves through that. So that's the very basics. The stuff back there, that's how to specify that job. We can, when we click on this one, specify the conditions under which that order will be fired off. And if we click the magnifying glass, we get to select what kind of material shall be used. The magnifying glass has sometimes different uh, metrics to select from. Let's uh, give you a different example. Let's get on over to the metal smith's forge and uh, make ourselves a breastplate so here we have already defined the material so we cannot define anything else but what we can make here is define the size of the armor because that is actually a thing that does matter so uh, i just wanted to showcase that to make sure that the magnifying glass you know that it's always something else all right let's get on in there so here we can now specify how the work order is going to work. Great, eh? So with the uh, clock thing, you can specify how often the job is uh, going to be done. So if we click on there, we would now make 10 beds each day. Well, that might be a little bit much. So we can also configure that to a monthly thing, to a seasonally thing, or a yearly thing. So uh, you can use these alone as triggers via time. There's also other triggers. So here we can now apply a certain condition. Configuring that is quite uh, obscure. I'm going to cover that after we throw the other things because that's basically the most complicated thing. And here we can make a certain job dependent on another job. So basically we could now say, make those beds only after those iron brush plates have been forged. This is of course a nonsensical example, but you could now say, please make this only after you have made some other stuff. Or this is uh, specifically used, for example, for steel production, where you can tell the game, please only make steel after we have made the materials that are required for that. So this is uh, where this stuff gets used mostly. And down here, the most uh, most brilliant thing the devs have put in. So there are a couple of suggested conditions. These are basically all things that you can do with a green button there, but they are already pre-configured for you in a way that makes sense. So for example, here we can say, make beds if we have less than 10. We can, of course, configure that number. So you click on that plus, and then you can now specify I want to you guys to make beds. If we have less than three beds, go make beds. Maybe we don't want 10. We want to make one bed or three beds, whatever. It's up to you. You can specify that like you want to. So this is one one trigger, a pre-configured trigger. You can use the other pre-configured trigger here that goes like if we have enough logs, then make beds, also an option. So these are all different well yes you check when you check them out all the products have different suggested conditions so there's uh, always some this is basically the most used combinations it's pretty useful and 90 percent of the time you will get uh, through the game with just using these but i want to uh, introduce this method here so when you click the green button here you set a new set of uh, conditions there so this is basically the template of these down here. So amount of items available is at least zero. So we can now specify the number again here via exact numbers or plus minus. We can now here change the 
availability so at least three at most three greater than three and so on and so forth by the way you can do this also for these uh pre-configured things so you can adjust them to your own needs and back there now things get get, get extremely complicated so here we can now specify the type of item the type of item well it is basically always uh, specifying whether it is a bed or a bookcase or a piece of, uh, of clothing you get the idea it's all about what exactly is the item with the uh, next thing here we can now specify the material so we could now say let's say breastplates and here we could now specify the material to steel breastplates there we go that would be one thing and now here's the most uh, weird thing so here we can now go for all manner of different things so we can now say the amount of uh, steel this steel breastplates in display objects or we could go for all manner of different uh, conditions be sure that you know what you're doing when you're fiddling around with that and uh, get ready to have to reconfigure these things a little bit because they are quite obscure when you don't when, when you use them the first time but these three buttons here basically allow you to concoct every one of these suggested conditions but you can of course and that's what i personally would recommend just use the prefabricated and then specify them to your own needs so uh, you, know, you can always go for a certain certain way that you want to go for we can here change the specific conditions and whatnot most of the items have really really cool pre-configurations so you won't have to go too deeply into tinkering around with the with this button yourself i just wanted to try to explain as well as possible how it works i hope that worked so that's how we allocate global work orders these can be picked up by any workshop on the map these will be picked up by any workshop on the map so there could be now the uh, situation where we want a specific metalsmith here. Basically, let's say we just want to have steel items made only by or high master armor smith, and then we want to make these steel items only and really only at this workshop. So this way, when you go on this tab and uh, specify it there, let's let's uh, pull that through. Let's say steel breastplate. Here. So here, this work order is now linked specifically to this metalsmith's forge. It will be not picked up by any other workshop. So the rest of these, it works just like the global ones did. We specify the uh, numbers here. We specify the conditions here. We um, specify the, oh, whoopsie. We specify the size here so the buttons here work all exactly the same exact except for the fact that this work order here like i said is only exclusive for this metalsmith's forge if i'd build different ones somewhere else it wouldn't work anymore this is an excellent tool to specify certain production chains to a certain worker or a certain spot it really is worth uh, checking this out so with these tools, you can already do a lot. The last thing that I wanted to mention here, you can also specify how many general work orders the workshop can receive. So we could now tell this workshop to receive no general work orders. So every other work order that is globally assigned to any metalsmith now will bounce off this one because it will only accept the ones that are attached to it. Of course, you can configure that just to your own liking all right but uh that's that's pretty much it there's um not that much more to say about that i hope you guys found that helpful of course i could now go very very deep into how configuring these uh, things by um specifically but i think that might be the content of a different video so feel free to leave me a content feel free to add anything that i might have missed and you th think would be really helpful for this video 
feel free to leave me a thumbs up on that one or a subscription even. If you like that video, there's a good chance that you will like the other stuff I do as well. And feel also free to check out the playlist link in the description box leading to various other Dwarf Fortress tutorials of mine. Have a wonderful day. Thanks a lot for watching. Big thanks to the supporters of this channel. You really, really are magnificent. If you want to support the channel as well, there's a bunch of links in the description box for that. And have a wonderful day.